night before she started off with me. You stand in that side of You see. Light side and the darker side. Right, the darker side, I want to show me all the walls and the ceilings. The light side, I want against. Okay? Take the light side, it says on there, it makes that attach it the other way. But I've been told to always have the darker side show me. Obviously, I've got a four year apprenticeship in this game. So I've always been told to have the dark side show me because apparently the glass attaches better this side and that's supposedly supposed to be the painted side. But I shouldn't really make too much of a difference, but if I'm please just don't want the dark side to show me so I start making it. Yeah? Right. Tool wise, you obviously got your tape to measure out, pencil to mark off on the boards, long levels at the end of the base, yeah, to mark out, take your measurement, standing knife. Holding where your level is, make sure you keep it in a straight line because that's got a tendency to wobble, boys. Just try and keep that in a straight line. All you've got to do is score it, turn it around, break it, and cut it off the other side. Yeah? Pencil. Cutting any little areas where the sterling up won't give you a nice cut. Cutting any little areas straight away. Off. Might take a little bit longer, but we'll give you a neat finish. Yeah? Surf on, grass, whatever you want to call it. Is when you got a board attached, you may be sticking a bit prayer on that bowl back. I want all, I want all these balls back flush to the woodwork. The nicer the board in, the easier the plastering on. So I'm not saying it's easy anyway, but please just keep the balls as neat as possible so it makes the job a bit easier for you to put the cut plaster. That's it, yeah. All the, all the, when, when you've got, say, a, a bit of uh, plaster on the to get extra or hanging out a bit, just flash it, but just gets far back to the woodwork, yeah? See what I mean by nice flash? Don't worry too much if you didn't catch all of that, as we will be providing a full commentary throughout the course. Firstly, let me begin by welcoming you to this remote learning plastering course. Let me ask you this question. Why is it that there are so few training videos on plastering? The answer is really very simple. Plasterers do not want you to learn their techniques and training schools want you to pay £300 plus to learn those skills. This presentation will show you all the tips and tricks that the plasterers use and with the appropriate amount of practice you will become a proficient plasterer. The presentation itself was filmed on location at a five day intensive training centre. As a result of that you will occasionally see people walking in front of the camera and you will hear background noises from the other courses being presented. Regardless of that, all the information you need to become a successful plasterer is included in this presentation. Before you begin, one of the most important aspects of being a successful plasterer is having the right attitude and confidence to have a go. Don't be afraid of slapping it on spreading it about and generally having fun with the plaster. The more you enjoy working with it, the more you will want to master it quickly. You don't need to be physically fit, but it definitely helps if you are supple enough to be able to bend and stretch routinely, as you will be bending over to reload your hawk every 30 seconds or so. Plasterers can spend a lot of time crouching and squatting, 
you may have seen some plasterers resorting to other methods for those out of reach areas and some will even use a pair of stilts. I suggest you keep your feet firmly on the ground however and concentrate on technique before learning circus tricks. Let's now have a look at what you will need to begin. For the purpose of learning the technique to plaster, we're going to focus on plastering a wall made from gypsum or plasterboard, sometimes referred to as drywall. This will give you a straight and flat surface to begin on. This is what many existing flat interior walls are made with, especially in modern houses. If your walls are bare brick or cinder block, then first try the technique on a flat surface such as plasterboard and move on to the bare wall once you feel comfortable to do so. For the purposes of plasterboarding you will need the following tools. A tape measure and pencil, a long level for drawing straight lines, a Stanley knife for cutting the boards, a pad saw for cutting off any protruding edges, a surform or rasp for smoothing off edges, and plasterboard nails, or more commonly, drywall screws. Here, the students are using plasterboard nails. This is mainly because the plasterboard will be removed at the end of the course. In a real installation, it would be more likely to use drywall screws and a cordless drill with either a posi drive or a Phillips bit fitted. The plasterboard is being fitted with the dark side facing outwards. The nails or screws are positioned approximately every 12 to 14 inches. The nails or screws must be either flush with the plasterboard or preferably slightly below the surface. As you can see here, this student has measured the gap between two joists. He's transferred his measurements to the plasterboard and he's now scoring the plasterboard ready to break. The old adage, measure twice, cut once, is usually a good formula to follow. However, if your plasterboard is slightly too big, you can use the rasp to trim it off. Using drywall screws in a cordless drill with a magnetic bit makes the process much quicker. Once you have the general idea about plasterboarding, you may wish to fast forward to the next chapter. For the purposes of this course, we have included a fair amount of footage of the students practicing. 
This is really to show you some of the problems that they may encounter and how to overcome them.